Hi everybody, I'm Sarah Gallegos and many of you probably know that I love to make quilts. Well, not only do I make quilts on my sewing machine, I also love to use a serger for quilts. So I'm going to share with you a few tips in this little Serger Saturday series about how you can put your serger to work when you are making quilts. So I am working on a machine that has both cover lock and overlock stitches. So a lot of sergers are one or the other, or sometimes you'll find a combination machine and they both create a little bit different looking type stitch. I'll share with you how you can use both of those stitches to achieve a perfect quarter inch seam and why you might use each of those different types. So I've started off by setting the machine up for a four thread overlock stitch. And what's special about an overlock stitch is that your machine is going to put a, an upper looper thread on top, a lower looper thread on the bottom. Your needles just kind of anchor it all together. And this stitch is special because it encases the edge of your fabrics with thread, completely covers the edge. So it's ideal if you're working with any sort of fabric, like maybe a homespun or a woven that tends to ravel a little bit because the machine will trim any of those little threads that may be sticking out and encase the edge with thread all in one step and you can get that perfect quarter inch seam. So again, I've set it up for a four thread overlock. That just means that I've got two needles in as well as two loopers. So I've got two different needles in my machine. You could use a three thread overlock as well. In that case, you're just eliminating one of your needles. Um, it's probably, it's still a really sturdy stitch, so you don't have to use all four threads. But this is what our overlock stitch is going to look like once it's complete. So I have set my overlock stitch with my stitch width so that it's exactly a quarter of an inch between the blade and my farthest needle. And that's what you're looking for when you're trying to set your stitch width. So I'm gonna stitch a little bit here. I like to always do a test sew before I begin working so I can make sure that I have all of my settings correct. And I'm gonna flip it over because you may see the thread just a little bit better on the back side here. So that's what my overlock stitch looks like and to test and make sure that you have a nice quarter inch seam allowance, you can get a ruler that's got a nice quarter inch marking on it. And I'm just gonna lay this right up here and make sure, and sure enough, I have over here the perfect quarter inch seam allowance. Now, if you are stitching and find that you don't quite have a quarter inch, all you've gotta do is move your blade over. Your blade on any serger can be moved left to right. And again, your seam allowance is the distance between that blade and that farthest uh, needle to the left. So I see that I've got a nice quarter inch seam allowance and now I'm going to begin by piecing a little simple block. So I've got my four triangles here. We're kind of doing a square and a square. I'm going to line up my first triangle on the first edge of my square and these I have to just kind of overshoot the points a tiny little bit and now I'm going to feed this under the machine and I'm going to run the cut edges of my fabric right along the blade. I'm not actually going to be cutting as I sew. So we'll stitch a little bit so I can see that that blade right here is going up and down as I stitch, but it's not cutting anything off. It's really just acting as a barrier. It's like using a guide foot on your sewing machine. So here I've got my nice quarter inch seam and I need to press this open and I'm just gonna use my fabric folding pen for that instead of jumping up and going to the iron. Now, you might have noticed that I have a different foot on my machine. Most sergers come with that standard foot that's metal. I have placed the clear foot on my machine instead of the heavy metal foot. And I like it a little bit better for piecing because I feel that it puts a little bit less pressure on the fabric as I sew and keeps anything from shifting. So I really like that quarter inch foot because like I said, it's just a little, it's a little bit lighter. So there's not as much pressure on the fabric and it really allows me to look at the edge of the blade and see exactly where I'm stitching. So I'll run another here. There we go. And once again, I'm going to use my fabric folding pen here. This thing is so handy. If you don't have one, you definitely want one. Keeps you from all those trips to the iron. There we go. Okay, so now I've got my first two sides on my square, and now I'm ready to add the next one. So again, I'm gonna take my little triangle here, and I cut these with my AccuQuilt. So I've actually got those kind of engineered corners, so it's really easy to line everything up. I'm just gonna feed that right in, keeping the edges of my blocks against that blade, and here we go. 
The serger will trim off all those little extra threads as you go too. Cleans up the edges or you can trim them as you go, whichever you prefer. So now I'm gonna add that fourth and final triangle. So again, I'm just lining everything up just like this. And I'm not using any pins. I think it's best to keep pins away from your serger, especially when you're using the overlock stitch and your blade is up. Anytime you run over a pin with your serger, you will dull your blade. Um, and you can knock your machine out of timing too. The, the baby lock sergers are pretty hard to knock out of timing, but on your sewing machine and on a lot of other sergers, it's really easy to do. So you don't wanna run over any pins. Now, if you really feel like you need to secure your edges and you don't feel as comfortable just holding it in place like what I'm doing here, you can always use wonder clips, those little bitty clips. Um, that's my favorite, especially when I'm working with my serger. Instead of using a pin, I use my wonder clips. So I'm just gonna press those sides down. There we go, a little finger press. Let's check for accuracy, pretty good. Let's see there, there we go. Look at that, it matches nice and perfectly at the top. So with my four thread overlock, I have created a cute little, I guess this is called a diamond in a square block, and everything's nice and straight and ready to be stitched together. So this is one stitch that we can use like I said, on your serger for piecing. This is what it looks like on the back of the stitch. It is a little bit thicker because you've got a little extra thread in there, super duper sturdy. You could always drop one of the needles and that would take a little bit of the thickness out. Now, thread that I'm using, I've actually got, and we'll kind of go over here so you can see, my cones of serger thread. Serger thread that comes crosswound on a big cone like this is polyester, so it's super sturdy. It's color safe, it's heat safe, so it makes for a really nice option for piecing. Um, and it is a thinner weight. It's not quite as thin as a 50 weight um, quilting thread, but it works really nicely as well. So now I want to show you how we can use a chain stitch to create a quilt block. So like I said, this was the overlock where you've got that encased edge of thread. This is what a chain stitch is going to look like looks a lot more like a straight stitch on your sewing machine. So in order to use this stitch, I need to switch over basically to the other side of the machine. So I've got a little bit of work to do here. First, I'm gonna trim all these threads off. And I like to do kind of a double trim. I'll trim here too, get the excess out of the way. Nicest way to get your threads out of your serger is to serge them out. You can't pull back on your threads on a serger because they're all wound together around the stitch fingers, so it's best just to serge them out. Now, the first thing that I need to do is move my needles. So I've got my two overlock needles in. They're kind of on the right side of my machine. I'm gonna switch over and use one of my chain needles. So I'm gonna take both of these guys out at the same time, just like that. And put one in my little accessory compartment for later. And then I'm going to utilize my chain needle number one, which is the farthest left needle. I'm using that because this is what I like to use for my quarter inch seam allowance. Now, you could use any of the chain needles and just determine where the correct positioning is for your quarter inch. So I've taken off the knife cover. Um, I've put down my upper looper and my blade. And now I'm just gonna quickly re-thread first my chain looper. So I don't need my upper and lower looper anymore. All I need is the chain looper. There we go. And I have the air threading loopers, so this is kind of fun. There we go, chain loopers threaded, quick and easy. And now I'm gonna go for my chain needle one. And I apologize if I'm putting my arm in the way there. I promise it will be brief. There we go. Just like that. And into the needle. Now you always want to keep your presser foot in the up position when you're threading on your serger, just like on your sewing machine, because that makes sure that your tension discs are open for your threads to get into those tension discs. Now, when you're working with a um, serger, those needles kind of drop down low. So I put the foot down just to be able to get to the needle, but for the rest of the threading process, I've always got it in the up position. So I'm gonna put my flat sewing table on, and now we're ready for our cover stitch. Now, I always like to 
run a test stitch after I've threaded just to make sure that everything is threaded correctly. Now that I've got this flat sewing table on, I've got a little bit more room to work and there's no blade involved. So this is how you can get what looks like a straight stitch on a sewing machine. There's no cutting. You could go right down the center of a piece of fabric if you want. So I'm just gonna do a little test. Oh, that looks great. I ran partway through the fabric. So if you take a look at the back, your chain looper thread kind of weaves back and forth on itself. Let me wait for my focus to kind of catch up a little bit here. Your chain looper thread just weaves back and forth over itself. So it gives you a little bit thicker look. And on the front, you get what looks just like a straight stitch. So there's the front of the stitch. And again, you get that thicker look on the back. Um, kind of like a feed sack stitch, you know, like on your bag of pet food. So for my quarter inch with the chain stitch, I am actually going to use a different foot. I can use the clear foot and it's got little markings at the toe of the foot. And that's one way to measure your seam allowance. I happen to know that on this serger, the needles are an eighth of an inch apart. I have my needle in the farthest left position. So if I were to run my edge of my fabric along where the third needle over would be, an eighth plus an eighth, I'd have a quarter inch seam allowance. So that's one option. Kind of getting to know the feet on your serger is an important um, step in the process here. So there's my nice quarter inch. And again, I always just take my ruler, lay it right up on there and do a little test. Sure enough, I've got a nice quarter inch. So that's one foot that I can use. I also like to use the cover chain stitch foot. And it's a little bit more narrow. Um, I have a little bit harder time seeing the clear lines on my serger foot. So I'm going to switch and show you another option. There are all these different accessories for our sewing machines and there isn't always one right answer. So see those little clear dash marks there? That was kind of what I was following. Um, this time I'm gonna switch to my metal foot because I feel like I can see it better. So again, you can kind of use whatever works best for you. I really feel like there are so many different options. The best thing that you can do uh, as you get to know your machine is try all of them and just find out what works best for you. You may find that for different colors of fabric, you like different feet or different types of fabric, different types of projects. So it's nice to kind of get to know what's out there so you can determine what you like. So with this metal foot, I can see right where that third needle would drop down and there's actually um, a cutout in the metal that makes it a little bit easier for me to see. So this is what I prefer to use instead of the clear foot when I'm piecing with a chain stitch. So again, I can give a little measure and make sure, let me hold that up for you that I've got that nice quarter inch. And sure enough, I do. Let's see if we can get a little bit closer for you there. Yeah. Okay, so now, once again, I'm just gonna give myself a little bit of fabric folding liquid there and add the other two pieces onto my block. So this particular stitch gives you, like I said, more like a straight stitch on your serger. It's a little bit thinner. You don't have the thread wrapping all the way around the edge of your fabric. And you've only got two threads instead of three or four. Only one needle instead of, you know, you could do one with the overlock or two. So it does make for a lower profile stitch. It's a little bit thinner. Stitch that second one on. And if you don't have a combination machine, whether yours does only overlock or only cover stitch, then hey, you can piece on your serger too. Doesn't matter which style you have. There we go. Got my last piece here. All right, so now I'm again going to just press those seams open and see how we did. Of course, you're not limited to serger threads in your serger either. If you wanted to use your 50-weight quilting cottons, you can put them on your serger. That's totally fine. So here again, I've got a nicely pieced block. My edges match really well. And on the back side this time, I just have that serger stitch. Got a couple threads to trim away there. So you can see the difference between the cover stitch and the overlock. 
another one for you here on the back side but on the front it looks the same both a quarter inch both perfect now if you were to use um, a sewing spool of thread on your machine you just want to make sure that you take off these cone holders that are in place on the spool pins those are there to keep your cone threads from rattling around side to side because they're extra wide on the inside so this just kind of sits inside there and keeps them from vibrating but if you were using a smaller cone of thread you'd want to place it directly on the spool pin and usually you put a little um, cap underneath of it and that'll help to keep the thread from sliding down the cross wound spools are important because the thread is designed to come straight up and it doesn't want to slide down the spool and kind of wrap around the spool pin so that's why you would use a spool cap and why this is ideal but it's not the only option. So I hope that you've learned a little bit today about how you can achieve the perfect quarter inch seam allowance on your serger. All it takes is a little ruler and a little bit of testing and you can make perfect blocks on your serger as well. And it's a lot of fun. Now um, in the next series here, this is a series of classes where we're going to be talking about creating quilts with your serger. I'm going to show you how we can step outside the box a little bit and we're going to be working with decorative stitches that will be exposed on our quilt blocks in the next episode. So with this particular technique, we're hiding all of those seam allowances like we would when we create a normal quilt block on our sewing machine. But next time I'm going to show you how you can utilize some fancy stitches, maybe even some fancy threads and add a little something extra to your quilt blocks. Thanks for watching.